Hi, I'm Andrew Mumford, and I'm the director of Net Zero Watch. There was a story in the Sunday Telegraph last weekend about some remarks made by the lead author of a Royal Society report on electricity storage. If he's right, and he is, the Climate Change Committee modelling of the 2050 energy system, which underpinned Theresa May's decision to go for net zero, was completely wrong. So I wanted to put a video out of these remarks so that people can see what he said for themselves. But I'm also going to show that it's not just the Climate Change Committee that has messed things up. We've been told again and again that net zero will be cheap. The Climate Change Committee, which advises the government on decarbonisation, says that it'll cost just £50 billion per year. The National Infrastructure Commission, uh, the National Grid, the Royal Society, they've all painted a similar rosy picture. However, a fairly large spanner has now been thrown into the works. The identity of the spanner thrower is rather surprising. Professor Sir Christopher Llewellyn Smith is a fellow of, a Royal, of the Royal Society and Emeritus Professor of Physics at Oxford. More importantly, he's the lead author of the Royal Society report on electricity storage that I just mentioned. So, what has he been saying? The Sunday Telegraph revealed that, back in October, Sir Christopher told a seminar in Oxford that the Climate Change Committee had got their energy system modelling all wrong because they only modelled single years. The first point, I can't say this too often, but if you don't look at several years, you look at the wrong answer. Now, the Committee on Climate Change took a model produced by our friends at AFRI, I'm sorry to say, who, without whom we couldn't have done this work. They looked at single years. They didn't allow storage to transfer any energy between years. This is a problem, he says, because you underestimate the amount of storage you need. So by looking at one year, you underestimate storage and you grossly overestimate the need for everything else. And that's exactly what the Committee on Climate Change have done. They've been stuck for some models in a mindset. We're going to need lots of gas plus CCS. So they like the fact that the AFRI model tells them that. But of course it tells them that because it's constrained storage. So it got it wrong. In other words, if you get back to back years with low wind output, you're going to need much more storage at much higher cost. So, because they only looked at isolated years, the Climate Change Committee will have missed this. Sir Christopher says they could easily need double the amount of storage that they thought. But Sir Christopher has also been gloriously indiscreet. Listen to this. So more seriously, the Committee on Climate Change, as I already said, looked at a single year, and they have conceded privately that that was a mistake. Uh, but they're still saying, well, they don't differ that much from us, but that's not quite true. So, the Climate Change Committee will admit privately that they've got it wrong, but won't tell politicians or the public. I guess we don't need to know. But the rot goes much deeper than just the, t the Climate Change Committee. In the same lecture, Sir Christopher says the National Infrastructure Commission's energy system model is wrong too, and for the same reason. Last week or the week before, the National Infrastructure Assessment came out. That's also based on one year. But they were told by the Met Office, you know, you can get extreme events. So they asked the Met Office, give us an example of an extreme event. So the Met Office simulated events, said here you are, go away and look at it. But events, where, uh, uh, whether events can repeat and cluster. So it's not enough to look at one. They looked at one. So they got the answer wrong. The Met Office are really angry that they told them don't do it, but they did it. So the Climate Change Committee and the National Infrastructure Commission have both got their energy system modelling wrong because they have looked at isolated years only. Has anybody got it right? Well, each year, National Grid publishes its future energy scenarios. These are a series of models of what the 2050 energy system might look like. So I wrote to National Grid and asked how they modelled wind farm output. And they confirmed that they don't look at back-to-back -back low wind years either. 
So it's good that Sir Christopher has highlighted the problem and we should celebrate the fact that the Royal Society has done things correctly. Or at least they've done things correctly when it comes to modelling the supply of electricity from the wind farms. There is, however, a bit of a problem because, as Sir Christopher admitted in a podcast last March, the Royal Society hasn't done things quite properly either. And now I confess something that's a little bit of a weakness in our report. We've got this model of one year of demand, okay? And and it was based on the weather in 2018. So it's not just absolutely uniform and mathematical as well. We simply repeat that 37 times with weather years with different weather, okay? Which means actually we're probably underestimating the maximum missing energy the peak because the times when there's um, no wind are the times when it's very cold. So while the Royal Society modelled 37 years of wind farm output, they assumed the same level of electricity demand every year. This is clearly ridiculous. In 2050, we're all supposed to be heating our homes with electric heat pumps. So there's clearly going to be a lot more demand in cold winters than in mild ones. So you're going to need much more storage to see you through back-to-back cold years and even more to see you through back-to-back cold years that are not very windy. There are other problems with the Royal Society's modelling, but that's a story for another day. For now, we just need to note that four national institutions with funding coming out of their ears have failed to model the 2050 energy system correctly And moreover, that they've done this in ways that reduce the apparent cost of net zero. That's a truly remarkable coincidence and should probably really be seen as an indictment of the rot at the heart of the British establishment. Thanks for listening.